Hey guys, welcome to another video. This video we're going to talk about something I kind of, well, announced in my channel trailer video, and that is that I'm going to do some new server builds this year. Or rather, I'm going to build one new server. Currently, I have, and let me uh, show you a shot there. Okay, I have two servers. One is my main storage server. It runs Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, I believe. And it's running ZFS with 24 gigs of memory. And it has a Core i5, four cores from, I think, five to six years ago. I think six years ago. Now, it has multiple storage arrays. It has five times two terabytes, although mostly those are off. Then it has five times four terabytes, and it has two times ten terabytes. But, as always, data keeps growing, and, well, I need more storage, and especially those two terabyte disks, but also those four terabyte disks, they're starting to get a bit old. So, I want to build a new server. So, as I mentioned in my channel trailer video, I'm going to be upgrading my desktop to a Ryzen 3000 series. So I thought, okay, my desktop is now about two years old, but it's still an 8-core Ryzen. So, why not transplant that motherboard and CPU to a new server, and then buy a new motherboard and CPU for my desktop? 8 cores is plenty for a server which will do some virtualization, stuff like that. And, well... My desktop, that's what I work on daily, so it can use a speed boost too. So it's going to be a Gigabyte AX370 Gaming 5 coupled with a Ryzen 1700. I need to buy new memory for it because the memory, the 32 gigs that's currently in my desktop is RGB memory and well, I'd rather have 64 gigs of normal non-RGB memory in my server. And... Um, I need some more components for it. For instance, uh, I bought these, I think, a year ago already. It was like, yeah, I'm going to upgrade to 10 gigs. Uh, sure, cool, but I never did. So I already have two of these Intel 10 gigabit NICs, which, well, okay, those are nice. And um, my current server already has an M1015 from IBM as an LSI RAID controller, but... I think I'm going to have to scale that up a bit because I reached out to Intertech and Intertech is uh, the company, you can see the video here, of which I built my 2U Ryzen server, which I built for our events. It's uh, actually in the in the back down, uh, down there, or back there, whatever. Um, I reached out like, hey, I made these videos and I really liked your uh, your chassis. So I was looking at your servers and, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you can help me out here. And they were like, hold on. It's a kind of a big box. Holy shit. They were like, hey, could you, uh, you know, could you maybe do something uh, with this? I was like, heck yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay, hold on. Uh, I have no clue if I'm even in the screen, hold on. <laughs> okay. So, they sent me a server chassis. Well, that's going to help a lot. And if you think, he's a big shot YouTuber, blah, blah, blah. Look, all the stuff I feature on my channel, I mostly buy myself. So, yeah, I'll admit, this chassis is sponsored. And uh, thank you, Intertech. But, um, let's take a look at it. Okay, well, this camera won't do much good, but let's switch to this one, and it should show you more. At least a top-down vision of it. I'm going to try and make it sound kind of okay, but my microphone's a bit far away. So, let's uh, get this off. Now, 
Now, before we go any further, um, I wasn't specifically looking for this version of their chassis. I was looking at their two to three hundred dollar, um, well, also for you range. But as you can see here, let me try and show you. <laughs> there we go. As you can see here, oh, it's upside down. Never mind. But it has a lot of hot swap base, and I was actually looking at a chassis which had less hot swap base because, well, those are cheaper. But most of it is the same, and I'll highlight differences between chassis they have uh, while looking at it. So let's uh, turn it right side up. Okay, cool. Very cool. Okay, the top plate's being held in with screws. Um, well, we'll have to look inside, so let me remove those real quick. So, this one is basically the most luxurious version they have. Uh, the 2U server I did was one of their cheapest because it didn't have any drive base. And um, then you have servers with some drive base but which use SATA connections on the back. And then there's this version which is going to save a lot of cable hell which happened in the previous chassis. And that is using, let's see if this will go off, new, it should though, hmm, I don't want to remove all the plastic yet, is that a YouTuber thing, not wanting to remove the plastic until it's done, I don't know. Did I miss a screw? I'm just... I'm an idiot. I missed a screw. There we go. Okay. Nice. Interesting. Fan bracket. Cool. Okay, well, let's switch to the camera from the top down view. Okay, camera is in my uh, McShakey hands. And uh, let's take a quick look around the chassis. As you can see, it has full height. PCI slots, and then it has two 80mm fans, and as like the previous time, I'm probably going to replace all of these with Noctuas, but that will be a separate video. So continuing on, there's a very spacious motherboard tray, and this is where your PSU will go. And currently it has a bracket installed, or it should have installed, where you can install a normal ATX power supply. And they also have one where you can install a server power supply. So, it comes with 3 times 120 millimeter fans, so that should be able to move plenty of air. Oh, nice! And it has uh, cable routing holes down here. So, routing your cable should be no problem whatsoever this time. Okay. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's going to have the fan bracket that the last one had. With four pins. And, uh, yeah. That looks good. So, because it has four pins... I should be able to do just the normal PWM fan mod I did on my previous build, and that will work out great. 
again less cables and then let's see over here okay so this back plane well actually let's look at the front first so if we look at the front as you can see it has 20 hot swappable drive base and then two times three and a half inch and one times well um slot in cd rom dvd rom drive whatever i don't know who uses that any anymore but okay so these are just uh, brackets you can slide them out put your disc in slide them back in and there we go so as i said 20 of those yeah, I might get some hot swap base for these, so I can uh, fill those with some SSDs, but we'll see about that. And on the back, um, we have a Molex connector. So that's Molex for power, and each rail has one. And then we have this connector. As you can see, there's no SATA connectors on the back. That's because it has these SFF8087 connectors. And what these do, they, these basically are four times SAS over one connector instead of four. So both your RAID card and this backplane has the SFF 8087 connectors. And then you can just use one cable to connect four drives. And as you can see, I'm going to need to figure out how I can uh, use six of those, or five, sorry, because, well, my RAID card only has two, so I've been looking into that and I'll probably get another IBM um, 1015 SAS controller and then maybe use a SATA to SAS SFF8087 breakout cable or basically reverse breakout to hook up the other drives. But more about that in later videos. And uh, yeah, I think that kind of wraps up uh, well, the first video in this series where I'm going to upgrade my home server. And as I mentioned, I'm very thankful to Intertech. I'm also not used to getting uh, stuff for reviews for my channel, so that's really cool of them. And uh, let's see if we can build a very nice server. So, if you have any questions so far, as always, let me know in the comments. And uh, hoping to see you along for this series. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.